historic festivities. To those of you who are here with us in person, you're in for a real treat, as we are witnessing a first in Sharks franchise history. watching on our television broadcasting partner, NBC Sports California, and of course, all of those of you who are listening on the Sharks Audio Network. Yeah! For the first time, the San Jose Sharks organization will recognize one of their own. One of the highest honors that an individual player can receive. To have their number retire.
to help them celebrate this occasion. It is an amazing group. Please join us in welcoming these very special guests to the ice. First off, please welcome Patrick's wife, Christina.
less than 100 at the time, would go on to have the legendary career that he did. 566 goals, 631 assists, nearly 1,200 points, 109 game-winning goals. We'll talk about a tough story. He's tied for seven in NHL history in game-winning goals. And he had a game-winning goal against every team but one that he played. He's played in more regular season games than anyone in National Hockey League history. He's Stanley Cup playoff games, 177 of those right here in San Jose. Woo! Representing his native Canada, Patrick won two Olympic gold medals. He was a member of the 2004 gold medal winning World Cup of Hockey team, and he captured another gold at the World Championships in 2003. That's quite a resume. Let's take a look back at this then young man who would go on to have one of the most remarkable careers in National Hockey League history. When Patrick was a little boy, the, the population of, around Anaheim was around 70 families. It's a farming community. Everybody cooperated and did things together. They were tight-knit in that you knew your neighbors, you knew all the community members, a very friendly community. Patrick, as a child growing up, was like any typical young child. He uh, spent a lot of time outdoors, and of course he had his farm chores to do, but he was into sports most of the time. He just loved skating. I took him to the rink, and I got this chair for him to uh, push around the ice, and he, he went up the ice and uh, halfway and he, he cut across the, the, he said, Dad, I don't need this. He just turned around and he, he skated off like as if, and th this was a, one of his first times that he went skating. And Patrick always played up by uh, age group that you could just see when he played up. I mean, the, the leadership quality and that, that just came along with a 10, 12 year old boy. When we met Patrick and we went out to his hometown in the Anaheim, Saskatchewan, he gave us the directions to go out there. And he was kind of like, oh, you're not going to believe this. There's no street signs. So you got to go down to a certain tree and take a right and take a left. <laughs> the first meeting, it was kind of eye opening. The, the character he had, you could see it in the family. You know, when we first saw him, it was very clear that his number one answer was speed. And he knew how to get open, and then he had a great release. And then there's something too you can't teach. You know, sometimes you can have that, but somehow pucks just don't seem to go in for certain guys. His pucks seem to go in. When Patrick got uh, drafted in Pittsburgh, that was an exciting time. And the Sharks uh, management, uh, they were really great with Jeanette and I. He was a classic of a high pick that can change the franchise for a long time. He it was one of those generational pieces for a franchise, he was that guy. At that time, until I got to know him, he came across as you know, very quiet and reserved. A lot of times that can be read as not intense, and you kind of get buffaloed by the guys with the yapping and the trash talk and things. But I think because you got to know him, you learn not to be fooled that deep down there was some intensity that far surpassed the guy with the big mouth. He played an exhibition game. It was either his 18th birthday or right in this. He was one of those guys that when things weren't going well, he only needed one chance to score. And yet there's not a lot of guys like that that one chance to score and they can keep you in games. This guy, got better as a player. And it's almost impossible because it's a version of hockey. Training. But I distinctly remember watching up top and I'm like, well, he's slow. I've never made that play before. So it's really interesting. He was a better player eight years into his career. And you don't see that very often. Quite honestly, Patrick Marlowe would have come along five years later and the way the game's played now, he'd have went even to a higher level. 
you look at these young guys in the game now, these big kids that can really skate and have a fun. But if I was one of those players, I'd pick somebody that I could emulate from the years past. I'd pick Patrick Rowe. He's a role model, the real deal. I mean, we think so much of these guys with talent assume their character. No. Talent and character at times can be mutually exclusive, not inclusive. This kid was both. At the end of the day, Patrick's a great guy. The three things you want in your organization, you want great people, great teammates, and great competitors, and check them all off for Patrick Merrill. similar to myself and a quiet person and I personally wanted to sort of help him with his growth so it wasn't overwhelming to him. He was a great listener. He didn't speak a lot but you could tell that he was very aware of what was going on around him and I think when I really recognized Patrick was a great player was his wrister. I mean, he could score from distance. I knew that this was a, a talent that very few people possessed. And as he grew older and as he grew bigger, he was going to be one of the world's greatest players. But a week into uh, training camp, I remember thinking to myself, I wonder if there would be a great experience for Patrick and for myself and for our family, Donna and our three kids, if maybe Patrick would live with us. Over the course of the next few days, we decided that this would be something that we should uh, look at, and we did. And then I think about a week later, Patrick moved in with our family, and it was just a, an amazing experience for all of us. Our daughters felt like they had a big run, and it, so it was amazing. You know, Patrick, we had a little guest house, and uh, so Patrick lived there, but he was around us you know, from morning to night. Patrick playing video games with the, the kids, uh, Patrick just laying on the couch in a, a lazy afternoon, and, and most importantly, the memories I have would be after a home game, in our little family room, the three of us would stay up and we would have sandwiches. You know, after a game there's so much adrenaline, it's, it's not easy to sleep, and we'd maybe talk for about half an hour about the game, but it was more about learning how Patrick grew up on the farm and Donna grew up on a farm in Saskatchewan as well and so man we would sit up till two or three in the morning those memories are just the most heartwarming when I think of Patrick and our time together I just think Donna and I are so proud of Patty and the life he's created with Christina and their family and they look like the most loving parents it's so rewarding to look back if you didn't know Patrick was a professional athlete, you would think, wow, there's a really nice, humble guy walking down the street with his family and not somebody that has uh, earned the praise of millions worldwide. And I think that speaks volumes about who Patrick is, how he is raised, how he respects others, and there's no phoniness about Patrick. And you might be surprised that he's a world-class athlete. Patrick, man, I just remember meeting you in 1997 and uh, taking you into our house and just watching you over the years develop into the man you are, the husband, the father. I'm just so proud of you. Congratulations on a wonderful career.
Cullen took over as head coach of the San Jose Sharks in 2008, and he helped lead the team to one of the most productive eras in franchise history. Between 2008 and 2015, he coached Patrick for 540 regular season games and 62 Stanley Cup playoff games. Getting to know family, uh, getting to know Patrick as a, as a young young man, and then watching him evolve and, and having the honor of coaching him was uh, something special. Early in my career, I was in Detroit with the Red Wings, and we naturally had a, a vicious rivalry with uh, the San Jose Sharks. Preparation for the Sharks was never easy. Patrick Marlowe, his speed, his skill, the impact he had on the game, a big part of our game plan centered around certain individuals, and Patrick would have been one of them. When I arrived in San Jose, I, I thought I knew Patrick fairly well, but what I learned a lot about Patrick is he cared deeply about his teammates, his team, the community, and uh, I got to physically see him work day in and day out. Um, I had heard about his work ethic, but the commitment to his body, to staying healthy, to being on time, and being a true pro, uh, that was evident day after day after day, and I think that's in large part why he was able to play the number of games he played. During my time in San Jose, we had a lot of wins in the regular season and in playoffs. Patrick Marlowe played a key in the game. He was able to play the game any way he needed to be played, whether it was physical, a skill game. He was able to score and check. Patty, captain for many years there, he was a great leader. He was a player that maybe was underappreciated at times. He scored many, many big goals. But if you were there every day, you saw him in the locker room. There were a lot of things that he struggled through to keep playing and to make the franchise better. The extra work he did, 